Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at a service that uh, looked like it has been uh, put aside in server, uh, but is actually there, and that is the software update service. Now, a uh, software update used to show down here in the advanced area, and so it's not present. And somewhere along the way it's been brought back, but it's in a little hidden location that you've got to go to in order to show it. So let me just show you how that works. If we go up here to the menu item here and we just go to view, you'll see we've got all of our different uh, services here. And lo and behold, right down here we have software update. So if I just click on software update, you'll notice that now it adds it down here as one of my advanced services. And now I've got it set up right here and I can start to go in and set up the details. So right up there in that view window is where that's at. And you just click right on there and it'll add it into there. And so, again, this is also kind of a quick way to get to your various uh, services. And so if you wanted to get there quickly, you could just click in these areas and it'll take you to where you're at. So I just wanted to show you that. So this is the software update service. And you see we've got settings and we've got updates here. And we've got a couple of modes that you can look at here. We've got an automatic mode where all of your updates are downloaded from Apple and immediately enabled for all your clients to install. Uh, so... Uh, updates no longer supported by Apple are removed, so it all is done in automatic mode. Or you have manual mode where you choose the updates to download and enable. Now one of the things you might want to do with this is do the manual mode, just because otherwise all of these updates from Apple will be downloaded uh, onto your server. And that can be a, a pretty big size, and depending on what your storage is, you probably don't want a lot of updates that don't really matter so much for you. So I would go with the manual route, and then that way you can manage them that way. So that's our settings area. Again, pretty simple here. Uh, if we come into updates, you can see this is where all of our updates will be. Now, let's just go ahead and throw the switch here so that we turn this on. And now that we got the service on, you can see we've got everything set up. The status is it's available at our server's name. And if we just come over here to updates, what's going to happen is, is pretty soon here, this is going to populate our updates. And so what I'm going to do is hit this check for updates down here. And it's going to go through the process of checking for those updates. Again, it says no updates right now, but we're going to go ahead and let it run. And pretty soon it will start to populate updates in this field. Okay, now that the updates have had a chance to download, you can see here all of the different updates that are available to me. And as you can see, there's about 1,446 updates. So there are quite a few updates in here. Uh, you can see that I can sort uh, these updates. I can sort by name if I want to do, do it that way. I can sort by version. I can even sort by date. So here's the most recent at the top or the oldest at the bottom. You can see it goes back to 2005. So there's a, there's a lot of old uh, updates in here. Again, just depending on your machine and what's available and what you need, those updates will be available there. Uh, but you can see if we sort by date, you can see the most current one it was right here, the Gatekeeper Configuration Data uh, Update. And so I can select this update and uh, just uh, basically highlight it. And if I want, if I just hit this, I can say Download, uh, which would download the update and put it on my server. And I could say Download and Enable, which would uh, not only just download it, but it would make it available for any devices that uh, might need access to it. And I'm going to show you how to set up your devices to go to your server for their software updates instead of just from Apple. Um, but as you can see, I can just set that up right in here. Let's just go ahead and click off of that for a minute. The other thing that I can do is, if you look at this little menu down here, I can do the download and download and enable down here. And I can also do the view update. I can do it by uh, hitting this menu item or just by coming up here and double clicking on the item. And what it does, it brings up a bigger screen that shows me uh, a little bit about the update. Uh, generally, if there's a summary, it'll give it to me here. It shows me the product ID, the status of whether it's available or not. And then I got the little gear icon over here where I can again select download or download and enable. And once I do that, that'll set that up. I'm just going to say cancel. So, so that gives you an idea of how to get in this and do that. And there's even search here where you can search for different terms. Like if you want to search for Sierra, you can see there's the Mac OS 10 Sierra or Mac OS Sierra update. You can see there's the latest one, how big it is, and all of that information. So it does have a built-in search, which works out nice, too. Let's go ahead and get, click off of that. You can also hit this box that says Automatically Download New Updates. Now, what that's going to do is download all of that data onto your server uh, for all of those updates, and it's just going to automatically do it for you. Again, I, I would recommend not doing that uh, unless you got 
a ton of space you don't care about giving up uh, because these things will add up over time and can be a pretty big uh, a big size on your drive. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could do that uh, if you had had bandwidth issues or you just wanted to have them on your server anyway. Uh, that's one thing that you can do. Now, when it does download, uh, let me just show you where it stores that information. If I just pull up the Finder here, you can see that it is in uh, the Server Hard Drive Library Server Folder Software Update. And if we go into the Data Folder, it's going to be right in here in this HTML uh, folder right here. And you can see the catalog information and all of that. And then this is where the content would be. So it does store it in your library folder on your main server hard drive. So uh, I just wanted to show you where that information shows up. So let's go ahead and just uh, put this down. So now that we've got an idea of how to set up the software update service and get it up and running, uh, let me just also show you how to set up your devices so they're configured to look to your server for their software updates. Okay, so here I am over in a terminal window. And what you would want to do is go to your uh, Mac that you want to have look to your server for software updates. Again, this is for Mac only, not for your iOS devices. And you would put in this terminal command. You'd go in as sudo, and you'd say defaults right. Uh, you go to this library, preferences, com.apple, software update, catalog URL. You would put in the uh, a server address, you know, server, in this case, server.example.com. And you would put the port there of 8088 with the uh, slash there, and then index su catalog, right, software update catalog. And you would hit enter, it asked you to authenticate, and then the device would look to your server for its software updates instead of Apple server. So that's one way you configure it. Uh, now another thing I wanted to show you, um, uh, well before I do that, let me just tell you, you can also set this up in Profile Manager. And through Profile Manager, you can actually then push the changes to your devices. So you don't have to do it in Terminal if you don't want to, but this is the way you do it in Terminal if you wanted to do that. So let me just go ahead and put this down. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you is if you didn't want it on port 8088, you wanted to put in your own port, then this would be the terminal command you would use, sudo application server app content server root and all this information here. And you would go to this uh, software update port to use equals, and then you would put in whatever number you want, uh, whatever uh, number of port there you want. So I've got 80 there. You could put whatever you wanted in there. If you want to put a higher port or something that's not being used, uh, you could do that as well. Uh, again, just in case you've got other services that might be using 8088, that might cause problems. So you can come in here and change the port number. So anyway, that gives you an idea of how the software update service works. Again, it's one of those uh, features that's hidden uh, automatically in server uh, version 5, but you can get to it through the view menu and just add it to your server services. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.